Mike, you better make sure you don't miss any of those quick time events. But why do we hate quick time events? Who says we hate quick time events? Welcome into episode 20 of Quick Time Event, brought to you by Middle of Nowhere Gaming. I'm your host, Courtney Osborne, and today I'm joined by Patrick. What's up, guys? Jake Decker. How's everyone doing? Not to be confused with the other Jake. <laughs> and Jake Kyle. Hey, hey, hey. Not Keel, like we said several <laughs> times when we first started talking to him. <laughs> I'm used to it. Jake, right, which one in this photo are you? I am the guy on the right. He's actually Perfect. all of them. <laughs> Dang. Mind blown. I know, right? Okay, so today, what are we here for? Anybody? Huh? The, the order. order. about the order. The order. Yeah, that game. The one that's probably spelled backwards on this video. Oh, well, it doesn't matter, but that game. Oh, I thought <laughs> we were talking about the 1999 movie with Heath Ledger. Ah, I saw that I, joke online. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm in the wrong stream. I gotta get going. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I'm sorry we didn't we didn't fill you in on all the information. Um, okay, so if you're unfamiliar with how Quick Time Event works, this podcast is typically a shorter podcast. Um, other than these spoiler casts, we try to make these spoiler casts about 30 minutes uh, rather than the typical 15 to 20 minute uh, podcast. Uh, this one, like I said, is going to be a spoiler cast for the Order 1886. So we're going to talk about all the major plot points, the things we liked about the game, the things we disliked about the game, uh, anything like that. So if you have not played and beat The Order 1886, get the hell out now, unless you've never planned to play the game. If you've never planned to play it, then go ahead and stay in and enjoy this with us. Um, but, yeah. With that said, you guys ready to go? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, let's do this. The clock has started. Jake, Kyle, you had somewhere to start? <laughs> uh, yeah, um... There's been a lot of talk on the internet about uh, quick time events in the game and how there is too many of them. And my question for you guys is, how did you guys feel about the quick time events? Did you feel there's too I, many? Uh, there was way, way too many. It was, and when I started playing the game, and even in our video, I think I made a comment about they they were just right from the get go. There's quick time events. To be honest, the, the quick time events didn't really bug me. Um, there, there was a lot, but I didn't think there was too many. I think partly though, because I was expecting there to be a lot of quick time events. Yeah, uh, I'm actually right, right there with you. I wasn't bothered by them. I mean, like Patrick said, right from the get go, it starts out with that, and that kind of sets you on this. And it kind of made me like, okay, so this whole game is going to be like this. Great, you know. And then you get to those segments of an hour where it's only gunplay and exploring and the only quick time event you have may be like opening a door or something like that. You know, it's rapidly hitting X. And so by the end of the game, I was actually surprised at how few quick time events there were uh, relative to, I guess, what I expected because of all the hubbub on the internet for the, the week prior to release day. I was expecting it to just be a quick time event just fest the entire game and it, it by the end i didn't feel like it was yeah it did taper off like about halfway through they started becoming far and few for sure yeah um my main complaint because like i didn't mind the quick time events but the one complaint i had was like during the elder werewolf battle okay you know i wanted you know a little yeah. more freedom in there you know be able to run around shoot something instead of uh you know dodge right dodge left and then yeah, and hit hit R one or L one or whatever. When when we saw that at E three too, it looked so cool. I was really looking forward to it. And then you finally play it, and it was just basically quick time events. And I w I was a bit disappointed there. Yeah, it was really restricted. Um, and but one weird part about that whole situation, uh, I, I felt that that was the worst quick time event in the entire game. Was those those two battles there where you have to do the whole strike with a, the hard strike or the fast strike and then to dodge or whatever. Um, uh, the coolest part about it, but the weirdest part, was the fact that you could mess up several of those and not lose the battle, not lose that fight. However, if you messed up on a specific one, it could be like a one-hit KO 
Like it could instantly knock you out, game over, you know, you have to restart it. But yeah. if you missed a few more of the other ones, you know, it was no big deal. You would just be bleeding, you know, and you wouldn't die. And I just I found that really interesting because most games if you mess up a quick time event, it's it's done. Game over, you you lose. But this kind of found a way to continue playing. It's like, yeah, people mess up in battles and they get hit, but they don't die, you know. Yeah, I started. I, um, I actually started losing or m- missing the quick time events because when you missed them, I mean, it was pretty brutal half the time when he would yeah. get. Yeah. I mean, one that comes to mind is towards the end when uh, the uh, Lucian or whatever I, I can't think of it. I think it was Lucian, just face plants him right into the um, concrete there. Mm-hmm. Jake, Tyler. And, um, I was gonna say uh, uh, one other thing about the. Quick time events was, um, I mean, I don't want to compare it to any other game, but I'm going to obviously compare it to God of War, which was a lot of quick time events, but it was also, you know, a well balanced between quick time events and gameplay, and um, I kind of felt that the quick time events outweighed the gunplay, and I don't. Do you guys agree with that? How do you guys feel about that? Outweighed it? What do you I... mean? There was more quick time events than. Um, you know, the um, cover-based shooting compared to, like, God of War, which was more um, hack-and-slash and less quick-time events. I disagree. I thought there was more, like, you know, cinematics, cutscenes, and quick-time events than there was gameplay, but I think when you just compare, like, the quick-time events to the gameplay, I think the gameplay far beyond outweighed it, or at least from from my I, experience, from what I remember. I agree. I You know, I'm, I'm with you on that one, too. Um, and... Like outweighed it. It depends on how you're you're weighting the two. Because um, I spent a lot of time in the non cinematic portion of the game, so I was constantly exploring every corner. I was going all over the place. I was in these battles for a long time. You know, like it just. I don't know. I felt like it was more of a Gears of War game than it was a Telltale game. You know, like those two are those two are come or kind of are, are what people uh, refer to these this as, uh, a mixture of the two. And I feel like I was involved in the, the fights so much more than watching cutscenes. Now, maybe it's just because I did take so much time uh, exploring, or maybe it's just because I got so sucked into the cutscenes and the cinematics that it kind of felt like it just flew by. But it just it didn't seem any different than a game like Mass Effect or any other game that has long, you know, very lengthy cinematic portions of the game. Like I, I don't know, it just didn't feel weird or it didn't feel abnormal compared to other games. I, I didn't ever put the correlation between this game and a Telltale's game. I, I saw it pop up, yeah, in the forums and whatnot. It never, never meshed that this was like kind of like a Telltale's game. Gears of War cover base, like you know, Gears of War Mass Effect for sure, hands down. But um, yeah, I never put Telltale's um and the order together. I mean, there was a couple times where I had to move the cursor and click the button like a Telltale's, but that was it. Yeah, yep. presentation was better than a Telltale game to say the least. <laughs> Much better, a lot yes. better, yeah. <laughs> which which right then and there, uh, just completely destroys the whole. Uh, I only pay twenty dollars for a Telltale game. Why should I pay sixty dollars for the order? It's like, do you know how much fucking money and time they put into this game? Like yeah. that game is gorgeous. Yeah, Apple, I, I, I feel uh, sixty funny. bucks was well worth it. Quality yeah. over quantity. To me, it was absolutely worth it. I would pay sixty dollars again for that game. It was good platinum. Good platinum for me. <laughs> I missed the platinum. <laughs> Have you guys platinumed it? Anybody else? No, no, no I didn't platinum it. <sighs> I missed a newspaper or a cylinder somewhere. I'm disappointed in all of you. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, to the plot. Back to the plot. When you get about, I would say it's about halfway through the game, maybe it's closer to two-thirds, when you find out that there are fucking vampires in this universe and in this game, what kind of reaction did you guys have? Oh, Too late. I was- I, I was I was stoked. I was like, you know, lichens and vampires, that's always an awesome combination, and especially to see what they'd do with that would have been awesome, but then they didn't really do much with it. Yet. Yet, yes. exactly, yeah, <laughs> it's an important thing to say. But it was, was kind of like, look, we found vampires, be careful, and then nothing happened. 
Yeah, I was streaming when I got to that part, and I, I think on the stream I'm like, oh my god, I better not fight vampires. I'm freaking out right now, and then <laughs> it's just nothing. I'm like, all right. And now like, it's like nothing. I'm like, okay, now I kind of wish I could fight a vampire, because I think that would be really tough to do. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, you know, it sets it up with the whole half-breeds the entire time. And for some reason it never occurred to me, like, what is a full breed? You know, what came before these half-breeds? You know, what else is there? What, like... It just never occurred to me that there was anything other than humans and these lichens. Like, it just never occurred to me. And we get there, and we open up that box, and there's a fucking vampire. I just, I lost it. When that, when that point happened, like, I dropped the controller, and my jaw dropped. And I was like, what? It's like, no, what? Like, oh, it just, it just made this story so much cooler for me at that point. Like, it just adds a whole other dimension to it that... Uh, I imagine would be fleshed out later on in, in a sequel or something, if we get a sequel. But uh, I, I uh, go ahead. Go, go, I'm sorry. Sorry. No, that was it. Oh, I, I there definitely has to be a sequel now. I mean, the amount of time that was put into that engine and whatnot, I feel like we've just gotten a taste now. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah. Do I, we know? Do we know how well it's sold? Because I mean, I'm assuming pretty well, but. I guess we'll find out like Friday or so. Yeah, we. Uh, I haven't heard any numbers yet. Um, the only thing I've heard is uh, personal accounts from different people saying that they've gone to Walmart and Best Buy and GameStop and nobody has it. So that's oh, the really? thing, only thing I've heard is that everywhere people have been going, is it's been sold out. So, But who knows what that means? I mean, how many copies were even shipped? We don't. We have yeah. no idea. Yeah, I, I sold quite a few copies the other night. And I didn't sell any. <laughs> I was actually the only employee at my GameStop to pick it up. Really? Really? Oh, wow. Yep. And we are a big PlayStation store, so. Wow, that's oh. disappointing. Maybe everybody went to Best Buy. Yeah. I hope not. <laughs> that's where I went. Dude, <laughs> Gamer Club Unlocked? Oh, that's, that shit's awesome. Um, Ice DJ. Yeah. Yeah. We actually thought that they were disappointing, too. We were just talking about that. So did anybody else expect, like, once you open up the vampire crate, to see, like, a brooding vampire in the corner? Bella, I love you. <laughs> I was oh, like, where man. are you going with this? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make Twilight jokes all over the board, but I just had to throw one in there. No, like, whenever you start lighting all of the crates on fire, I kind of imagined that eventually... Uh, some of the vampires would pick up on it and break out and start attacking you, and that never ended up happening. You just sit there and you fight the, uh, what is it, East India Company or whatever Yeah. the entire those, time. Those vampires are creepy, too. It wasn't like, you know, like Dracula, when they brought out Dracula, you know, he was supposed to be, like, seductive. It was like, what was that uh, film, early 1920s? Um, Nosferatu? I, I think so. <laughs> Maybe. It was like a black and white film, but it was like a legit creepy vampire. And that's what I liked about it. They're like, you weren't no brooding, emo, Edward kind of vampire. It was just straight up creepy. Edward. Okay, um, so if there's going to be a sequel, what do we want to know about the universe that this game's uh, set in? You know, What else do we want to know? What do we want to find out in, in a sequel? Is Are there more for me? I, I want to see where, you know, because these guys were knights at the round table and have been alive for centuries, and I'm assuming all of them were not there in that room during this encounter, this game. So I'm, I'm hoping maybe more of them start to flush in. I want to see what other creatures we're going to encounter in the future. I mean, we've got vampires, werewolves, is, like, what else is out there? Yeah, like, what is, is the order hiding... Uh, these monsters from humanity like does humanity even know that they exist because I, I really sorry we're I'm going back a little bit I really love how they they tied in Jack the Ripper to it they made yeah. their own little story about that like that was so fucking cool I don't what's his name I don't even remember his name oh yeah, 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 I can't think of his name either. It was the guy who's the vampire that you find out oh, he yeah. went to his house and he was Jack the Ripper the entire time. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Lord um, Hastings. Hastings, yeah, yes, go, go. that's it. Um, yeah, I think I'm just looking forward to see how they tie it into history like they did with this. Like, 
for the sequel. I just want to see what, you know, era they pick and how they, or if it's just, I, I just want to see them tie it into history more, I'd say. I imagine it won't be too long after the last game since yeah. because of Imag- the final cut scene. Yeah. The mid credits cut scene with Galahad saying, I am a knight no more. Like, that was cool, yeah. by the way. I mean, it works for me because I thought Galahad was an awesome character. I thought all those characters were awesome, to be honest. I wouldn't I really want to see any of them. Yep, I agree. Um, I, what did. Okay, do we know what happened to King Arthur? No, or like um, Sir Lancelot. I mean, there's, there's. That's why I was just getting saying a minute ago was there's characters part of the round table in that council that aren't present in this game, mm-hmm. which opens up several more stories that we could hear about. It doesn't even have to be the main story. They could be side stories. They could be offshoot games. They could be DLC things like that because. I, you know, while it may have said something about Arthur and what happened to him, like, we know that he started the Order. You know, we know that happened. But what happened to him after that? Did he die? Did, you know, like, I I don't even, I don't remember anything about that. And I would love to know more about that. Well, another thing, too, and it could possibly be a prequel, is, you know, in regular history, the Knights never find the Grail, but in this, they have the Grail, so there could be a game of them finding the Grail at some point. I mean, there's just so much that you can do with this universe now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, what would you do, what would you give to get a a cup of that black water? (laughs) Oh, that'd be great. (laughs) Be so fucking cool. Like, oh, man. I, I loved every time we got to uh, slow down time and shoot people and all that. Like, um, I, go ahead. I, I, getting back to the Black Wardo, I really like how it it revealed itself over a couple hours. Because the first time you drink it, and you're like, "What? What is this? Is this like a potion? Like, what's going on?" And then it just keeps, you know, giving you more and more. You know, just a little bit more as you progressively go along until the big reveal that, "Hey, this is the Grail." Yep. Um, and I liked how, uh, what was his name, um, Marquis, or, or I don't even whatever his name was, yeah. the French guy. Lafayette. Lafayette, yeah, how he takes over the name of whatever his, his First leader. Of yeah. Yeah. That, that whole scene there where that all happened, that was really, really fucking cool. I, I really enjoyed the amount of detail uh, that they, they put into all the cutscenes and the storytelling and, like, what specific pieces of information they gave us during those. Like, it really helped the the storytelling, the overall cinematic experience, uh, advancing the plot and all that to the end, in my opinion. Yeah, and I'm, t- I'm curious, too, how they're going to, how the sequel's going to set up the relationship with uh, Galahad and his sort of ex-girlfriend, I guess. They didn't really touch too much on it. But the way it ended, it sounded like she's out to get him, and I think that that's going to be a pretty cool uh, plot point in the sequel. Yeah, that's I true. I, I was kind of bummed that they didn't really go further with it in this one, but, you know, they were trying to hold some stuff back, I suppose. So who who was at the end with Galahad? Uh, it was Nikola Tesla and basically the East Asia Company or whatever, or East India and, um, Company. Yeah. Wesley was with them, the inventor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm pretty sure Wesley, Wesley lived, right? Because he that was, was in the cutscene. Nikola Tesla, right? So you're talking about, I don't know, Wesley. Wesley was the inventor, the guy. So. I thought that was Tesla. You're talking about yeah, Tesla. This... Oh, is it Tesla? Okay. Yeah, it was Tesla. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was he was the guy who was on the radio with him at the very end, correct? Right. That was what, it was, yeah. what we're talking yeah. about. Okay. So then he is basically, in all intents and purposes, just completely done with the Knights and has no connection now to any of them, right? Because that's what, Jake, you were trying to set up right there, was the the hunt that his ex-girlfriend is going to have for him, basically. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I guess, I I mean, I tried to, I've watched that final scene now twice. (laughs) And I guess I just need to keep watching it to to pick up more and more hints. Because I only picked up Tesla's voice talking to him, and I guess I didn't really consider the fact that the knights were trying to find him. I know that martial law has been declared on London. That happened yeah. in the final cutscene as well. So I'm, I'm wondering, what is all that about? Is that the order who declared martial law, or is it, and is it because they're trying to find Galahad, or what? 
Yeah, see, that well, I don't know. That was a bit unclear to me as well. So yeah, Gal had so. uphold his promise and not reveal the half-breeds like he you know, told those two he wouldn't? Hmm. The tough questions. <laughs> Kyle, Jake Kyle, were you going to say something? Uh, no, I was. you guys said what I was going to say, so it's all good. We stole your thunder? I'm sorry. You did. Uh, man. Okay, so that final scene, we are duking it out uh, with, what's his, Lucian, or what is it, whatever his name Lucan. is. Lucan, Lucian. Uh, so, that came as a crazy surprise that, uh, what is it, the Chancellor, or whatever, the leader of the Order, already knew that he was a fucking uh, half-breed, or vampire or whatever the hell he was the half breed right yeah he was a half breed yeah. yeah that surprised the hell out of me that he already knew it and then the fact that he was just like you know all right galahad you're gonna have to take care of it i can't kill my own son uh we're gonna let you go but you're not part of the order anymore everything's cool as long as you can kill my son for me i was like what the fuck <laughs> you know like who does this oh i don't know I felt oh. they kind of just threw that in at the end. Yeah. Yeah. With him knowing that, because I'm like, really? You knew the entire time? I, mean, I, I just didn't believe it. I was like, like they should have just had one guy as the bad guy instead of having this other guy come in. Just like, oh, I knew Ooh, the entire I, time. Yeah, I mean, like, right when they introduced Luke in or Lucian or whatever, I was like, yeah, this guy, this guy's going to stab him in the back at mm-hmm. some point. And then oh, when yeah. they went off on their own, I'm like, yeah, Galahad, you're fucked. I mean, it's going to happen. And sure enough, he stabbed him in the back, yep. even though yeah. I was hoping he wouldn't. You know, it's like, you sh- why don't you take someone that was, you know, you've been around with during the game earlier, like, uh, what was that one girl's name from the beginning? Kinda, he kind of had the love thing, then she's out to get him. Yeah, anyway, I, don't, I forget all their names. Yeah, Agnes, like Agnes. take her. Yeah, take her with you because you know you can trust her instead of some guy we've only seen in a cutscene. Yeah. yeah. Um. Now, I, I'm kind of agreeing with you that I I feel like throwing in his dad there at the end was kind of pointless. Yeah, we could have not had that happen. He could have never shown up, and it would have been fine. Like we could have found out more about him knowing in the sequel. You know. He yeah. could have came in, and that could have been another plot reveal. It's just like, yeah, he knew all along, and you killed his son at the end of the last game. He's pissed, you know, like something like that, which could have given reason why they're trying to hunt him at the end, um, if that's actually what's happening with the martial law. Uh, but beside all of that, uh, at that very end, I don't know what you guys thought, but whenever he pulls out the gun... You have to click the button to load it or whatever or get it ready to shoot, and then you have to pull the trigger, and then it just goes to the black screen, and it's like, The Order, 1886. Like, I was like, oh, damn. It was like one in the morning when I I got to that, and I was trying not to pick up Erica. (laughs) I was like, shit, that was awesome. Oh, it was a cool ending, really cool ending. A little rushed, but cool. What about yeah. that last part at the ending where the difficulty picked up in that fight? Did the oh, difficulty yeah. pick up? I thought I thought I, that was pretty stupid. <laughs> it, it it took me a couple tries to get through that part. I, I yeah, because I, I, I was just it. like, because you're at that point where it's like you just want to get to the end. You want to know what happens, and they're like, here's more guys and more guys and more guys, and shoot through them. And then I just you know it it just felt really out of place in my opinion. But you know, still fun. Well, I mean, it is battles, it is gunplay instead of quick time events. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's probably the, their argument. Um, speaking of different parts of the game, there was that one segment where it was all stealth going through the courtyard. Did you guys enjoy that segment or not? Like, what'd you think? After I just I... wanted to get through it. Yeah, after <laughs> yeah. I died a few times, I was uh, just getting really pissed off. Because I was always at just like half a second off of hitting triangle. And then I would die, start the entire part over again. I never had trouble uh, with the hitting the triangle part. I always had trouble with ac- accidentally getting seen. Like there was a few segments where there was two guards walking close to each other. 
and you had to wait till they were far enough apart before you could kill one of them. And I would always kill one, and the other one would see me, and it's an instant kill. You know, they they kill you right away, and you have to redo the segment. And then I would go, and I would kill that one just fine, you know. And I'd be like, all right, moving on, you know. And I would turn a corner, and there's a guy there, and he'd kill me. You know, it's like I just kept fucking up during that second part of the stealth sequence, and it was annoying as hell. I mean, overall, I I... I thought the stealth sequence was fun because it was a different, it was a change up of how we were playing the game. Um, but, but it was really annoying that you could die so easily. You'd think they have all these cool guns that they would be to develop a silencer of some sort. Well, they kind of, they kind of do, but wasn't there that one scene when you like Nicola shows you a silencer, but you do get the crossbow and I just use that. I'm like, screw this. I'm yeah. Gonna crossbow everyone. Cause this is, this is annoying. Yeah, I used the crossbow yeah. a few times, but I, I, for some reason, thought that the crossbow was going to be like I, I needed it to for for the very end of the sequence or something. It was because you only had five bolts, and I was yeah. like, I am not wasting these. There's going to be <laughs> I need them for something. Oh, I know oh, I will. Oh, I wasted them. I wasted them <laughs> really quickly. <laughs> At first, I was trying to save them. Then after a couple of deaths, I'm just like, fuck it, and then just you know, guns blazing, crossbow yep. blazing, I guess. All right, so is there any other parts of the story that we want to talk about before we wrap this up? Or the game itself? How would you guys uh, feel about oh. that About that little uh, kind of hint to a love story they uh, threw in there with uh, Callahan and the uh, chick from the Resistance? Oh, the Indian chick? Yeah. <laughs> that, was, was like, uh, that felt forced to me. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, oh uh, she fancies you, and then at the end she abandons, abandons him and leaves the city. Yep. <laughs> Tesla's like, maybe we should follow suit and get out of here, like, just like she did. I was like, what? She ditched me? What the hell? Yeah, well, I liked the how they, like there was sort of a love story between Galahad and the other girl, but they didn't really talk about it too much. It was just kind of like implied here and there. Mm-hmm. But then, yeah, I thought the other one was kind of forced. Yeah, I didn't see. I didn't see that as a love story. I thought that was more of like he was a mentor to her since he trained her. I didn't really. Feel that yeah. love connection there. I, I did too, but then there's that one part, like right before you start the self stealth sequence or whatever, like Lucan or whatever is like, my sister will never forgive me if you don't come back or something like yeah. that. And yep. then and then how angry she gets when he betrays, like it just kind of made me think that there at least was something there at some point. I my favorite scene between them is when they get in the elevator during that like first chapter to go upstairs, and she's like, so. How was your morning or whatever? And he's like, oh, you know, just typical morning in London or whatever. Like it was perfect because they had just murdered, you know, like twenty people. <laughs> he's like, hope the rest of the day is the same way or whatever. And I was just like, what? Like that was a great, great scene. I loved that. Hmm. Let's uh, let's just hit really quick about how uh, awesome the mustaches were in the game. <laughs> I was. Jealous. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm pretty jealous. Yeah, those are, those are some pretty kick-ass mustaches. Big selling point. Uh, <laughs> Not enough one, mustaches. One small thing that did catch me was right after that bridge scene, you know, where he crosses the bridge and tries to figure out where the the Indian women are. Mm-hmm. Um, he murders like the entire. I mean, he must kill like fifty or sixty of them, and then he just shows up, and they're like, "Oh, let's be friends now." And I thought that was. That felt a bit strange to me just because he was, you know, he was pissed off. He was ready to kill them, and then he just kind of flipped almost a bit too easily. But I understand that they had to yeah, in order to push the plot forward. But still, like, that was just one of those moments where it's like, huh, he just took, like, a giant gun and shot everyone. But wasn't it, like, the resistance group? Were they the same as the Indian group, or were they not? I thought they were the same. Because yeah. he, he questioned them at the, he questioned that one guy. He like beat the shit out of that one guy, asking where. Oh he was. yeah, you're right. Hmm. Maybe those women just know how to look past their pawns. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> 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 their pawns, and that's all they're good for. <laughs> I don't know. That's interesting. I didn't think about that. So here, I got one more point, and it's real quick. Okay. With this game already being delayed, was it because it was supposed to be a launch title, right? No, it wasn't supposed to be a launch title, was it? It was. It was always slated for the following year, so it was. It was supposed to be, I believe, fall. 
2014. Okay. It was always supposed to be fall 2014, and then it got pushed back to spring 2015. But yeah, so have, it was delayed, but not not lost. Would you have let, been okay if they took another year and just added more to it? <sighs> with with Bloodborne coming out only a month after, I think that PlayStation would have survived and it would have been fine without it. Um, so probably would have benefited it. Uh, if Ready at Dawn wanted to add more, because that's assuming they wanted to do more or wanted to put in more. I think that this is probably as close to what they wanted as they could get. Like, this is the experience. They've been, ever since The Order 1886 was announced, it was always supposed to be a cinematic experience. It was never supposed to be uh, a straight-up Gears of War copied game or anything like that. It was always going to be cinematic. And so... Oh, so, okay. whether or not they had more to add to the end of the game, because we did kind of comment on it feeling a little bit rushed towards the end, whether or not they had more there, if if they did have more they wanted to add in, then yeah, like if they could have taken another year to add all that in, I would have absolutely been behind that. But okay. I don't know. It's See, I, I, I remember seeing the E3 trailer, and I was like, okay, whatever. And I really did not pay much attention to it up until the launch, or up until... The week before when it was leaked, and uh, you know, I started looking at it then. Um, I didn't know that they had always said it. It was supposed to be a cinematic experience. So, okay, that kind of changes how I think about that then. Because didn't I, I think at one point they started calling it a filmic experience, or or other people did. I don't. I remember all along they've been pushing that it wasn't going to be just a normal game. It was going to be cinematic. Uh, yeah. But I, be honest, I really like how the game was done. I liked the presentation. It made me want to go back and play other quick games that were kind of like this, like Shadows of the Colossus and Heavenly Sword and stuff. So maybe we'll do that on the stream or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, I thought... I, I, I think another year probably wouldn't have... I, I'm okay with them basically coming out with it now. I think they were happy with the length of the game. I mean, it definitely was a lot longer than you know, what people said it was, and I thought they, you know, told the complete story that they wanted to tell within that. Obviously, I can never know, though. Um, and I think after a while, they just kind of need to let it go, get feedback, and then start on their next project. I would yep. have rather had that happen. Yeah. Exactly, because what if that extra year just made it worse, you know? Oh, Who true, knows what would have happened. Um, getting that, it out that, now, getting it out now gives them plenty of time to start taking all the feedback, start planning the sequel, and then start developing it. And the sequel could end up being way better because it's out now. Because you know every game eventually has to come out, and they have to get feedback. Uncharted One is not the best game, you know. Like Uncharted One was cool; it started something. But Naughty Dog, you know, took that in, and they made Uncharted Two because of all the feedback they got. And Games have to go through that, especially new IP. And so yeah. hopefully that happens with this series. Hopefully the Order 1887 is way, way better because then it would just be fucking phenomenal. Yeah, I think it will too. And who was the developer behind that? Ready at Dawn? Ready that at was Dawn. like their first triple, big AAA game too. Yep. And like, like I definitely had my problems with it, with the gameplay especially, but I think that their next game is going to be phenomenal. Like I think once they take all the criticism and whatnot... We're gonna have a really great franchise series. I agree. Now, would you guys want to see like a more open world experience for the Order eighteen eighty seven? No, <sighs> no, because you no. can't really tell that straight, that solid of a story with an open world game. Like the reason this game was so good was because of how linear it was. Yeah, I think yeah. the the presentation would take a huge hit too if they decided to make it mm-hmm. open world. You I mean, can make yeah, maybe cool a, to see all those locations and stuff like that, though. Yeah. Maybe a few more gameplay experiences, but yeah, I'm I'm quite fine with how it was. For sure. Yep. Okay, so that's about 30 minutes, so we need to go ahead and wrap it up. So that way we don't bore everyone's ears off for an hour. <laughs> so anyways, this was episode 20 of Quick Time Event. Um, Brought to you by Middle of Nowhere Gaming. If you have any topics you want us to talk about on a future episode of Quick Time Event, you can email us at contact.mong at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter at mong.com, all spelled out, and then that's dot and com, spelled out. You can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash mongnetwork, or on our new YouTube page, Mong Plays, where you can find all of our Let's Plays and our live stream archives, all that good stuff. 
Uh, and then you can find us on Facebook, Tumblr, and Instagram by searching for Middle of Nowhere Gaming. And then the website is middleofnowheregaming.com, where you can find all the latest editorials, features, news, reviews, all the good stuff. And then we're all on Twitter. You can find me at Osborne underscore 2009. You can find Patrick at... At PatGar36. You can find Jake Decker at... At Jacob Deck. Jacob Deck. And you can find <laughs> Jacob Kyle at... At All Natural Jake. <laughs> oh, Perfect. I, I really wish I had a, a unique name, but nope, just my last yeah, name in the year I, I graduated want, high school. I wanted to go with Jake in a box, but it was taken. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thank you guys for joining me. It was fun. Yeah, thanks for having awesome. me. Yeah, thanks for yeah, having me. That was fun. I'll we'll have you on in another episode soon, hopefully. And Mong! Mong? Mong. Middle of nowhere. Mong. <laughs> Middle of nowhere. <laughs> <sighs>